Hi, this is Prakash from 60 Seconds. So today we'll look at a CAD 2008 problem. This is considered to be a difficult problem. So we'll try to use multiple approaches. We'll try to solve it in a standard way. And we'll also try to see if we can find a simpler way of using options. So let us begin. So the question is based on that of a series. And we have different terms as been in the question. So this is the first term, this is the second term. And we need to find the summation of all these terms. So let us look at the general term of the series. What would be the general term of the series? So each term is divided into three parts. For example, for this first term, the three parts are 1, 1 by 1 square and 1 by 2 square. So these are the three parts of each term. Now, if I look at each part and if I try to get a generalized form of that part, that will give me a general term of the series. So if you look at the first part, first part in each term is always 1. So in the general term also, the first part will be 1. So if I look at the second part, the second part has 1 by 1 square, 1 by 2 square, 1 by 2007 square. So first term's denominator is 1 square, second term's denominator is 2 square. So I can say it refers to n. First term has 1, second term has 2, third term will have 3 and so on. 2007 term will have 2007 square. So I can say in the general term, the second part will be nothing but 1 by n square plus if you see the first term here in the denominator has 2 square so when n equals 1 the denominator here is 2 if n equals 2 the denominator here is 3 so I should have something like the third part as n plus 1 whole square this comes out to be my general term and I need to take the square root of the whole thing. So this becomes my general term. Obviously, I'll have to take a submission of this general term. I will have to take a submission of n equals 1 to 2007. That will give me the sum of the series that I'm looking for. For the moment, I will forget the submission part. I will just try to simplify the nth term. I will just try to simplify this term and then in the end, I will put the summation. So let me try to simplify it. So what I do is I will take the LCM here. So if I take the LCM, it comes out to be n square into n plus 1 whole square. So it will give me nothing but n square into n plus 1 whole square plus here I'll get n plus 1 whole square for the second part and for the third part I will get n square square root of the whole thing n into n plus 1 whole square so I am taking square common and n into n plus 1 whole square it becomes plus n square plus 2n plus 1 this is the second term and the last term is n square divided by n into n plus 1 whole square the root of the whole thing now I know that n into n plus 1 whole square and I have square root so obviously the 2 will get cancelled so the square root will get cancelled with this for the denominator alone so I can take off the square part and I can take off the square root from the denominator part which we will do in the next step so I'll get n into n plus 1 whole square plus here this n square and this n square this n square and this n square will get added and it will give me 2n square plus 2n plus 1 square root of that divided by n into n plus 1 I hope this step is clear so this n square n square gets added it gives me 2n square and this is 2n plus 1 which comes as it is okay now in the next step I get n into n plus 1 whole square plus I take 2n common from here so I get divided by n into n plus 1 and here I get the square root for the numerator now I know that a plus b whole square is nothing but 
a square plus 2ab plus b square. Now this expression is converting to this form. So I would want to write it in the form of a plus b whole square so that the square and the square will get cancelled. Now here if you see closely a comes out to be n into n plus 1 and b is coming out to be 1. Let me write this in exactly that format so that it becomes obvious. So I can write it as n into n plus 1 whole square plus 2 times of a is n into n plus 1 and b is 1 plus 1 square divided by n into n plus 1 square root of numerator. Now if you see n into n plus 1 was a so I have the square of it so this is the a part b is 1 so I just multiply my next second term with 1 which doesn't essentially change the second term and this one I have written as 1 square so I have written in the form of a plus b whole square so finally I can write it as n into n plus 1 this is a plus b which is 1 whole square square root of that divided by n into n plus 1 now the square and this square root will get cancelled and I get n into n plus 1 plus 1 divided by n into n plus 1. So just simplifying it, so this part divided by n into n plus 1 will give me 1 plus, I will get 1 by n into n plus 1. Now I have to take the summation of this part as I mentioned in the beginning. So let us take the summation now. So Finally, my expression is where n equals 1 to 2007. So let me break this up. So I get something like summation of n equals 1 to 2007. So summation of 1 plus summation of n equals 1 to 2007. 1 by n into n plus 1. Now, summation of a constant term n times is nothing but n into k. If k is the constant, we know summation of a constant term k from n equals to 1 times to n times is nothing but n times of k. So, using the same logic, I can say that Summation of 1 will be nothing but 2007 into 1, which will be 2007. So this part converts to 2007. Next, it is a pretty standard result which a cat aspirant is expected to know is that 1 by n into n plus 1 is nothing but 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 1. You are expected to know this. This is a pretty standard result. If you don't know, you can derive it using partial fractions. The only thing is partial fractions is not in scope of CAT. But if you don't know, you can use partial fractions. So, just to illustrate a little on partial fractions, in case of partial fractions, if we have a particular numerator and we have multiple polynomials or multiple factors in the denominator, we want to break it into immutable fractions. So, what we do is, we write the expression as a by n plus b by n plus 1 because when we divide it into individual fractions we know that the numerator can be some value which we do not know yet so that is what we are trying to derive so if we solve this we know that we get 1 equals a times of n plus 1 plus b times of n so substitute the values of n now we will try to get the values of a and b so if I put n equals 0 I will get 1 equals a and if I put n equals minus 1 I will get 1 equals minus b or b equals minus 1. So primarily we try to substitute some values of n such that one of the two variables get eliminated a or b so that we can get the value for the other variable. So 
that's what we have done. So when I substitute n equals to zero, this part gets eliminated, and I am left with only a. Same way when I substitute n equals one, n equals minus one, this part gets eliminated, and I am left with only b. So this way I derive the values of a and b. So substituting these values of a and b in the original equation, we get the values of the expression in terms of partial fractions. So that's how I can write it as one by n minus one by n plus one, and this has to be a summation from n equals one to two thousand seven. Now there is no standard formula for summation of one by n. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to write different terms, and we'll see if we can find a pattern where we can cancel some terms. So we'll get two thousand seven. Plus, so one by n. So n starts from one, so it will be one by one minus one by first time n is one plus one two. So I get one by two. Then next term will be one by n. N become n becomes two, so it becomes one by two minus one by three plus one by three minus one by four, and so on. So then we reach somewhere. One by two thousand six minus one by two thousand seven plus one by two thousand seven minus one by two thousand eight. Okay, how do I know these last four terms? Is if you see after one, the next higher value comes as a negative. So I know first I will get a negative two, then I will get a positive two. Or first I will get a negative half, then I will get a positive half. So that's how I know that first I will get a minus one by two thousand seven, and then I will get a plus one by two thousand seven. And if you see this expression, when I put one here, this ends with one by one minus half. So the first term of this expression ends with one by two. Then I get plus half for the next term for n equals two. So same way, here, when n equals 2007, I will get 1 by 2007 minus 1 by n plus 1, which will give me 1 by 2008, and I will not get any further terms. Now I hope you can see that we can cancel a lot of terms. This minus half can be cancelled with plus half, minus 1 by 2 can be cancelled with plus 1 by 3, and so on, and we can cancel till 1 by 2007. So finally, we will get 2007 plus This one minus one by two thousand eight, which will give me two thousand eight minus one by two thousand eight, which is nothing but my first option. So this is the traditional approach that I can apply to get my answer. A lot of concepts involved, so the problem sounds like difficult, and there are few concepts involved. For example, I need to know to write the general term. First of all, then I need to know what is the summation of k terms. Then I should also know how to split this term one by n into n plus one into different factors. And there is a little work involved. Okay, so a little difficult in the environment of an exam. Okay, now let us see if we can solve it in a little smarter way by using options. Okay, so just be with me, and you will understand how we can use the options. So if I look at the first term, let me consider only the first term. Okay, so if I consider only the first term, the first term tells me one plus one by one square plus one by two square. So as of now, I am considering n equals one, and I am taking that there is only one term in the whole series, and n equals one. So what will be the value of this term? The value of this term will be nothing but This is one. This is again one. Second part is also one. Third part is one by four. So it comes out to be two point two five. Square root of that will give me nothing but one point five. So if there was only one term in the whole series, then the value of that series would have been one point five. If there was only one term in the whole series, then the value of the series would have been one point five. So let me see which option will give me one point five. If I consider that there is only one term in the series, so clearly, if there are two thousand seven terms, 
my first option starts with 2008. It means it starts with n plus 1. If the total number of terms in my series is 2007, then my first option starts with 2008. So if there are n terms, my op first option starts with n plus 1. So if there is only one term in my series, then my option should start with again n plus 1, which will be 2. So it will be 2 minus 1 by 2, which is 1.5, which is equal to what I need. So first option can be my answer. It is not necessary that first option is my answer. If I can get another option which is giving me a value of 1.5, then I need to come up with another reasoning by which I can eliminate one of the options. So 1 can be my answer. And if none of the other options are equal to 1.5, then I can say 1 is definitely my answer. So let me check the other options. So if my series has 2007 terms, my option is starting with 2007. So my option starts with n equal to the number of terms in the series. So if my series is only one term, so my option will start with 1. So 1 minus 1 by 1, it gives me 0, which is not equal to 1.5. So second one cannot be my answer. If I look at the third one, it is nothing but 1 minus 1 by 2. This gives me 0.5, cannot be my answer. This gives me 2 minus 1 by 1. This gives me 1. Again, cannot be my answer. This gives me 2 minus 1 by 3, which is equal to 5 by 3, which is 1.67. But I want 1.5. Again, cannot be my answer. There is only one option which gives me 1.5, which is the first option. So, only the first option can be my answer. So, if you see, just by using one term, I could figure out the answer. So, there is additional reasoning by which you can eliminate option number 2 and option number 3, but you may not be able to eliminate other options. But I can tell you an alternate way by which you can eliminate option number 2 and option number 3. If you see, I have 2007 terms here, and each term is 1 plus something, square root of that. So each term will be greater than 1 and if there are 2007 terms, they will at least add up to 2007. So my final answer or the sum of the series should be greater than 2007. Second option tells me 2007 minus something. So second option is less than 2007. Definitely cannot be my answer. Same reasoning goes for third option. 2007 minus something cannot be my answer. So second and third we can eliminate based on this reasoning but we may not be able to eliminate fourth and fifth based on this reasoning. Just to give you a perspective, though it may not be good enough, eliminating two and three may not be good enough to answer the question but this is just an additional reasoning that I want to give you a perspective that sometimes we can use a logic of this kind as well. So a difficult question of CAT by looking at options or by trying to use options can become much simpler. So always please keep an eye on the options, especially series questions and algebra questions. Most of the times you can solve by using options and in series questions generally if you look at the first term or first couple of terms, try to see the value of the first couple of terms and see which option is close to the first couple of terms. And that should give you an idea of which can be the option. Okay, we look at more questions of this type, which will help you understand how we can solve the series questions in a more easier way. So, if you have any questions, please pose them below and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thank you.